This presentation is an overview of our work on wireless network coding. We are interested in applying network coding ideas to improve the performance of wireless networks in practice. We design novel network coding schemes, we evaluate their performance, and we try to understand to what extent these schemes are implementable in practice. So far, we have identified two concrete scenarios. The first is in the context of wireless mesh networks, and the second is in the context of collaborative smartphones. Let me start with the first scenario. Wireless mesh networks is a setting where network coding has been shown to bring significant performance benefit. For example, the scheme developed in COP is one hop intercession opportunistic network coding and was shown to be both implementable and bring high throughput improvements. The challenges that still remain in this setting is the high loss rate that may exist in this environment and the behavior of TCP unicast clause. In this work, we ask the question how we can deal with loss in COP-like networks. There are several approaches to this problem. Some of them operate at the end systems, some others operate at intermediate nodes. As part of this project, we developed a new scheme which we call I2NC because it combines intercession and intracession network coding to deal with loss in this environment. This work was a collaboration with AT&T Research and led to an info paper. It also appeared in an article by AT&T. In this figure, I'm showing you one hop in detail out of a larger multi-hop wireless network. This is the classic X topology where two unicast flows, the red and the blue flow, meet on the intermediate node I, which codes packets together from the two flows. The next hops can then decode using the packets they over here over the links that they are shown in dashed line. In a nutshell, our I2NC scheme introduces the following functionality to be implemented at the intermediate node I. First, node I needs to perform intercession network coding similar to COP. In addition, it needs to decide what percentage of flows should be coded together, given that there will be loss on the direct and overhearing links. Second, node I performs intracession network coding. It adds redundancy so as to deal with loss on the direct and on the overhearing links, and also decides how much redundancy to add and on which flow to add it. Finally, and in order to take informed decisions about the inter- and intercession coding, Node I needs to communicate with its neighbors and get feedback from them. We developed two schemes. The first one, which we call I2NC state, is similar to COP in that it requires information from the neighbors about which packets are overheads there. The second scheme, which we call I2NC stateless, operates with much less information. Node I needs only to know the loss rates on the direct and overhearing link. We started with a network utility maximization formulation of the problem that incorporates constraints and goals that I described before. For the details of that formulation, I uh, refer you to the paper. Then we develop a distributed solution to this problem that provides the optimal control for the key components of the system, namely the rate control, traffic splitting, queue update and scheduling. We implement a practical scheme that mimics the structure of the optimal solution and can be implemented as a thin layer. This thin layer sits on top of MAC at the intermediate nodes and below the transport layer at the end nodes. We evaluate our scheme extensively through simulation. We developed our own simulator in GlomoSim and we tried different topologies. Here I'm showing you just the results of one example scenario, in particular the results from the multi topology shown in slide 5 earlier. We compared different schemes as loss rate increases. As expected, the throughput of all schemes decreases for higher loss rates. However, I propose schemes, and in particular the stateless scheme, which is shown in the magenta color, performs significantly better. It can achieve up to 50% higher throughput even at the presence of high loss rates. Furthermore, it achieves this benefit while operating with much less information from the neighbors. The performance benefit is consistent for TCP and UDP traffic. For more information, I refer you to the paper. Next, I want to describe a different scenario, which is in the context of smartphones. Consider that there are several smartphone users that are within proximity of each other and that they are all interested in viewing the same video at the same time. This video can be stored on the cloud or on one of the phones. 
This situation can arise, for example, when a group of friends or colleagues are in a remote location and not all of them have good or cheap cellular connection, or when they want to view video content that is stored on one of the phones. In any of the situation, the key question here is how to best utilize the resources available to all the smartphones so as to provide good user experience at low cost. These phones have the following resources. They have computing resources, storage resources, and communication resources. They can connect to the internet through cellular or a Wi-Fi connection. They can also connect to each other through a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth link. In this part of the project, we developed a scheme which we call Microcast based on the following three ingredients. The first ingredient is cooperation. All smartphones cooperate to use their collective resources to achieve the goals described above. The second ingredient is network coding, which in this case is intra-session and implementing at the application layer. The goal of network coding here is to make distributed scheduling easier. The third ingredient is a particular pseudo-broadcast, which I'm going to explain later, which exploits the nature of the wireless channel when combined with network coding at the application layer. In this problem as well, we started from a network utility maximization formulation of the problem that captures the setup I described before and developed a distributed solution to the problem, which provides the optimal downlink and device-to-device -device rate. The solution to the NUM problem also highlights what information needs to be exchanged for the smartphones to uh, take these optimal decisions. Then, mimicking again the structure of the optimal control, we design a practical scheme, which we call Microcast, that allows smartphones to share a video stream, locally or remotely stored. Our current testbed is based on smartphones, in particular Google Nexus S phones, that have 1 GHz processor and half GB RAM. These phones have also several network interfaces. They can connect to the internet through a cellular or a Wi-Fi link, and they can connect to each other through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi link again. We implemented our software at the application layer in Java on an Android platform. It actually runs both on mobile phones and on laptops with a regular operating system. The architecture of our software consists of four components. The first component, shown in red, is responsible for having every phone communicate with the server and download parts of the video through a Wi-Fi or a 3G connection. The green component is responsible for having a phone communicate with its neighbors and exchange different parts of information. This is the component where network coding is implemented. The communication with the networks can be achieved through a Bluetooth or a Wi-Fi link. The third and fourth components, shown in um, orange and uh, blue, are responsible for um, reordering and caching the video segments and playing them while still downloading parts of the video. Our current testbed looks as follows. A number of cell phones connect to the internet through an 802.11 access point and to each other through Bluetooth links. We compare the following schemes. The baseline scheme is the one where all the phones connect to the internet through their own unicast connection and they download the same information. The second scheme, which is um, our microcast scheme, uses not only uh, the downlink to every phone, but also the local links for cooperation and application layer network coding. You can watch a video that compares the scenarios by uh, one of our team members at EPFL on the project website. This is a proof of concept, and we're currently working on variations of this scenario and schemes. In this demo, four phones must display concurrently the same video that is hosted on a remote HTTP server. To access this server, they can connect to an 802.11 access point. The phones are also connected between themselves using Bluetooth. In the first scenario, the phones download the video independently through the 802.11 connection. When the first phone starts to download, it can receive data reasonably fast. But as soon as more phones connect, the download rate decreases till most of the phones are almost stuck. In the second scenario, only one phone, the third from left, downloads from the 802.11 connection. The other phones will receive the data through Bluetooth from the first phone. We can see that in this case the third phone has a good download rate, being the only one using the 802.11 network. The other phones also receive data at a good rate through the local connection. Since 
all phones are receiving at high rate, it is possible to start playback of the video on all devices. Finally, we can further improve over the previous idea by exploiting the broadcast nature of the wireless channel. Unicast connections at the application layer alone do not achieve this goal. Essentially, what we would like to have is for um, cell phone C to be able to overhear packets transmitted from A to B. This conceptually simple goal is not trivial to implement in practice due to various implementation details. The broadcast mode of 8.11 is not the best option here due to reliability problems and low rate. The right solution when 8.11 is used for local links is pseudo broadcast. However, this is challenging on Android. The overhearing mode on Node C is not always enabled. Furthermore, the overheard packets are not passed directly to the application layer. We had to develop an API specifically to support this functionality. You can watch a video by one of our team members at UCI that shows our implementation of pseudo broadcast on Androids. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first demonstration of pseudo broadcast combined with network coding on the Android platform. We are going to connect node B with, with node A. Now we are going to connect node C with node A. And now that we have topology ready, we are going to fetch the content. Node A is downloading the content. And now node B and node C are going to get the content from A. So node B will join now the stream. So we can see the packets. The purple packets represent encoded packets, while the green packet represent decoded packet. Now node C will join the stream. Here in node C we can see two set of purple packets. These two sets represent the two streams that C is receiving. The first stream is the stream that he is receiving from A, and the second stream is the stream that he is overhearing from B. In summary, as part of this uh, project, we are interested in applying network coding to improve the performance of wireless networks. We find two practical scenarios, one in the context of wireless mesh networks and the other in the context of collaborative smartphones. Our work spans a range of uh, problems, ranging from uh, theory to practice, and our current focus and ongoing work is on implementing network coding on smartphones. More information again can be found on the project website. This work is a collaboration between our team at UCI and our partners within the MURI, ATPFL and AT&T Research Labs.